Yo, what up though, it's your boy Everyday Inc. Welcome back to Only Ace Bully Camp. If you new here, make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Also, hit that notification bell. That way you know when your boy's about to drop some heat because I do drop heat on a regular basis. So stay tuned in. Yo, what's good, family? Glad to be back with y'all. As y'all can see, the channel name has changed from Only Ace Bully Camp to Everyday Ink. So now your boy just kind of do a little bit of dogs, music, and everything else. But today, family, we speaking on what dog breeders don't let you in on, what dog breeders don't tell you about, family. Um, today we speaking on breeding in specific. I'm coming to um, the audience that's looking forward to breeding dogs thinking about breeding dogs in the future, thinking about um, becoming a full-time breeder. I just wanted to let y'all in on some stuff that y'all may not be too hip on or y'all may not be too aware of, family. And I'm going to be dropping some jewels, family, so make sure you go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It's well appreciated, family. Now, jumping straight in, y'all, I'm gonna let y'all know off top, um, if you think you're about to jump in this bully game, if you think you're about to jump in this dog breeding game, when I say dog breeding, I don't just mean bullies, I also mean Frenchies, uh, golden retrievers, German shepherds, whatever it is that you breed that may or may not be in a high commodity. But um, especially the bully, bully breeding game family, don't think you're about to just pop in the game and put two dogs together, have puppies, and just get rich no family you got it all wrong that's not what the game is family it's a whole lot of work that come in behind um being a dog breeder um and i wanted to let y'all a little bit in on the ugly side you feel me the scars bumps and bruises that you will get trying to pursue breeding full time or even just as a hobby you feel me um it ain't no easy way to say it, you feel me? So I'ma just make sure I be straight up with y'all like always, cause y'all know we linked in, we family, so I be keeping it G with y'all, you feel me? So it take a lot of bread to get in this game the correct way. With that being said, you can bullshit and jump into the game with bullshit, produce bullshit and leave out the game with bullshit. The best thing you can do is take your time, family, Get your ducats in order, stack your bread, and come in the game with something nice so you leave out with something nice. That's just me starting off with that off top. Um, I got plenty of videos where I talk about how to start dog breeding, how to be a breeder if you want to do that, guys. Um, what breeders don't tell you is the scars you get along the way, you feel me? Um, if you breeding dogs, I'm hoping you're not just some random cat off the street that's like, oh, let me make some money, put two dogs together, and uh, now I'm a dog breeder. That's not how it works, family. Um, so with that being said, I'm hoping that you're even pursuing breeding or thinking about breeding because you have a genuine love and a kind heart towards dogs and you care for them. And understand your passion can turn into a job extremely fast, family. And what I say by that is the fun can be sucked out of it, guys, really quickly, y'all. Um, a downside to this game is that you will, without a doubt, you will wake up and clean shit every day, family. Um, yes, you can train your dog. They are going to have accidents a lot of the times. Um... I found myself being able to train um, two dogs and have them to where they can run out of the house and go take care of their business outside and come back in and maybe they'll have an accident or two in the house from time to time and it's just random. Let me let you know if you're looking to pursue dogs and breed full time, you're going to have multiple dogs. And when I say multiple dogs, in this case, I mean three or more, family. Um, and three is enough. That's God's honest truth. Um, Lord behold, you get you get five of them. If you got five dogs, you got a full-time breeding job. Whether you like it or not, or 
It's still, you still breeding dogs full time. Now, some of y'all cats get out there and have fire dogs. And y'all got a nice, maybe, maybe y'all got a super nice outside set up. But a lot of times the dog will get neglected. If it's going to get stuck in a cage. Because you work in another full time job. Trying to breed dogs for full time. And you really don't know what you want to do. You ain't really 100% in either way. So the dog's going to suffer. You feel me? And you're going to suffer at the same time. And ain't nobody. Um gonna be winning y'all so you must clean shit every day family that's something that has to be done period whether you want to clean up a mistake in the house and have your house smell like shit and pee which is not what i'm into um i may have one house dog the rest of them are in the garage in their kennels um well kept and most of the time kept clean i'm not gonna sit up here and lie to y'all like a nigga don't get tired and i don't have them hard days to where i want to skip two or three days and i don't feel like cleaning shit today and i clean it in a few days you feel me and get them situated and get them back straight um i'm not a fan of having my dog stepping in shit or stepping in peak or anything like that i do use drop cages with that being said drop cages still must be cleaned thoroughly because you don't want your dogs to get sick. Um, you don't want them to get any kind of weird infection or you wouldn't want to be sitting in shit. So you don't want to leave your dog shitting in shit, family. Um, with that being said, if you are to get sick, your dog shits. If you need to go and get something done for that day, your dog still shits. Your dog is going to take a shit as much as you take a shit and four or five times more than you take a shit it's gonna get taken and with that being said you must clean it um a lot of us experience the extreme sickness the shit that was going around y'all know what i'm talking about that you had to get the for i don't want to just give it no glory in this video you feel me but when that was going around some of y'all cats was down two and three weeks and i know I caught it. I was down for like a solid month. God's honest truth. You feel me? Like I was down, down, down bad. Like two weeks. You feel me? And then I healed the other two weeks. But it was a rough month for me. The dogs don't stop. stop they don't stop shitting because you get sick, family. So you miss four to five to six days, and your dog's been shitting. It's piled up, man. It's not nothing fun to clean up nobody else's feces regardless whatever line of work you in human animal it's not fun cleaning up feces period guys so that's a big part of this and that's if you want to use hay at the bottom of your trays and of course you want to get your yard decent too or you want to treat your yard if your dog's outside um but if you're using drop cages that's a cost for pads and Stuff that you gotta clean out and switch on a regular basis. Um, or hay or or some kind of wood chip, whatever it is you use in the bottom of your dog cages to clean up the poop. Um, you also wanna use a cleaning spray. That's something that's going to come out of your pocket as well, family. That's a downside. Cleaning dog poop. We got that out of the way. Number one, check, ding ding. Vet bills. If vet bills do come into play. They run up. The more dogs you have, the more expensive your vet bills are going to be. The more you choose to breed your dog, the more vet bills that you're going to have. From progesterone test to progesterone test to progesterone test to progesterone test until you get the right number. Also, um, for your dog's regular shots, for your dog's um, C-section, for your dog's surgical insemination if you choose to run that route for your dog's um ai for your dog's tci all these things cost ladies and gentlemen and these vets have become hip that there are more dog breeders and they need us to get some of these procedures done not all of them but we need them to get uh, a majority of them done you feel me so vets realize that with that you have seen prices jump through the years i don't know how long some of y'all cats been doing this but I've been doing it maybe five, six years. You feel me? And I can definitely see the prices spiking. The vets know what's going on. Um, so that's another thing. The cost that it, it costs to feed your dog. Your dogs must eat as well as you eat. Do you eat bullshit food on a regular basis? If so, 
you want them to look like bullshit. You don't want your dogs to look like bullshit, so you want to feed them good food. Good food costs money. Um, generally, these dogs, bags of dog food can cost you $75, which is generally what I end up pay for, paying for what I feed. At least 60, 65 to 70 plus dollars is what you end up paying, and um, I tend to buy dog food at least, at least, mm, maybe once or twice a month. You feel me? So, it's an expense. It's a bill that comes out of your pocket. Um, time. Time is unforgiving. Time is something that you cannot buy. Time is something that you cannot get back. These dogs will suck up all of your lovely time that you thought you was going to spend with your loved ones, your family, your friends, your children. These dogs will suck up your time, family. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm here to let you know before you jump into this thinking you're just trying to get rich and make some money. Or why you into this and I can stop you before you get too deep if you're really not in this. This is not for the average Joe. You have to really want this to be a breeder. I have seen huge breeders have multiple dogs and me just having um, three to five dogs. I, I don't see how these cats have 10 plus dogs. Unless you got somebody helping you family. If it's just you, most of the time, either your full day is dedicated to them dogs or you're going to end up neglecting them in some form or fashion by not being able to have enough of your time to go to them. You generally got about maybe, I don't know, a few hours in the day to give to them. You got about a good eight to sleep. Um, you got another, you know what I'm saying, 16 to do whatever you choose to do with, take care of whatever you got to take care of. But I'm gonna tell you now, the dogs are going to get a huge portion of their time. These dogs must be bathed. They must be loved. They must be cared for. They must have free roaming time to be a dog and to have some sort of life. <clears throat> You're vacationing. Whatever you thought you was going to do. Wherever you thought you wanted to go. Wherever you thought you wanted to go and you want to stay a long time. Or... You want to go on a trip that just popped up and your homie's going somewhere for the summer or you want to take your old lady somewhere. Cancel it. You're not going. You're not going. You're not going. You're not going because you have to be there to feed the dogs. You have to be there to clean the dogs. You have to be there to love and care for the dogs. Now, some of y'all have a pretty decent setup. Um, the I rent, I do not own. So the house that I previously rented had an insulated garage. And it was a blessing to me, family. An insulated garage. I could um, actually leave for three days at a time and have my dogs, enough food, uh, enough water. <coughs> Excuse me, family. Enough food, enough water. And they were tucked away in the AC. And they were fine. All I had to do was turn my camera on them. So make sure I didn't have to leave my vacation early to make sure they were good. Of course, when you get back, you got shit to clean up. And urine and whatever it takes um, for to get their living space back up to par. You feel me? Um, but generally, me, I don't know about y'all, my vacation, I don't want my vacation to always be three days. Um, so with that being said, you may have to pay someone to sit in for you and take care of your dogs and that cost. The cost of your vacation just went up, family. And I'm going to let you know, I don't care what people say. Nobody, I don't care who it is, I don't care how close they are to you, nobody can love your dog and care for your dog the way you care for your dog. Do not expect to come back and shit would be as you please to have it. People take care of dogs in a different form and fashion, each and every person, guys. Um... So that's just another downside to this breeding shit. Travel. Another thing I want to speak to you all about is the pain. The pain, family. You experience real pain, real sorrow, real heartfelt emotion when these dogs die. And I'm here to tell y'all the truth, fam, because... All of us have an expiration date, whether it's a flower, whether it's a dog, whether it's a human, everything and everybody generally has an expiration date that has life. 
with that being said, you grow all the time you spend cleaning shit, all the time you spend putting into these dogs, training to these dogs, loving these dogs, breeding these dogs, you grow an emotional attachment to these beautiful animals and you have a love for them. When they pass away, there is nobody that can prepare you for the pain of losing someone you love. And I'm going to say someone you love because those of y'all that love dogs, like I love dogs, know that they, they are human. I don't care what y'all say. They human. They real souls. They have a real life and they matter. They care. We love them. You feel me? And they are a part of our everyday lives versus some of these goofies out here you feel me like my dogs i can tell a part of my life too that maybe you can't share with nobody else but you can tell your dogs anything and they gonna love you for it the next day you can fall over your dog land on your dog and he bark at you and he's gonna love you the next second you can cuss your dog out one day and the next day he's gonna love you Humans aren't like that. So these are very tender, sweet souls. Remember, all dogs go to heaven, man, because they have that type of love. Nobody can prepare you for the pain you feel um, when they leave you, man. So it's, it's definitely heartbreaking. I've seen dogs die from a numerous amount of things, from heat strokes to the wildest shit you can imagine. Not just me on my end. I've, I've lost a few dogs. Uh, but I've seen a lot of my friends that breed. I've seen them lose dogs for the smallest, most unbelievable things, man. And uh, once again, losing somebody hurts, man. These dogs are family members um, to a breeder. So that's something that's, that's really painful, you feel me? Um, and it's something that's hard to deal with. And I don't think enough breeders talk about it but these dogs are more than some kind of money hole you feel me like if you can only look at the dog for the money that you gonna get from it then you in this shit for the wrong reason or you thinking about getting into it for the wrong reason family but uh i just had to share with y'all bro some of the shit that come with this shit you feel me some of the aches and bruises and scars that you gonna get trying to breed dogs it can be fun and it can be very not fun guys um don't think you finna get in here and get rich like that because that that's a honest to god it's a needle in a haystack man i'm not saying it won't happen for you and i'm not saying it can't happen for you i'm just saying it's as far as like having a real success with this dog game man i would say it's probably man i'm gonna say like maybe one in every thousand people bro one in every thousand breeders that have real success with this shit man and experience taking care of their family experience living the way the lifestyle they want to live um they experience um a very wealthy financial standpoint one in, out of every thousand breeders family and it might be less than that <laughs> but uh don't get in it for the money if you jump into it jumping into it for fun and that's just genuinely what you have a love for and you got time for this shit cool but if you one of these young cats trying to jump into this, man, let me tell you, your time is not going to be spent how you want to spend your youth. I would say this is a, this is a sport for an older gentleman. <laughs> and um, if you ask me, I'm young to be in it myself. Uh, now that I'm in it and have an understanding for what it fully, truly is. Uh, right now, I have three dogs, and I understand how to operate with them. I'm learning more as I go, but I do not see myself ever, for any reason, having more than 
five dogs at one time, guys. Anything past five, it's easy to lose yourself if you do not know what you're doing. So when y'all see these big YouTubers on here with five, six, seven, ten plus dogs, it's because they worked up to it, bruh. It's because they really put time into the shit. It's because they really have the experience. Um, they've made the money from it. They have an understanding of how shit's supposed to go. They have an understanding that it's a business. Not some kind of underground, trap, drug ring type of shit. It's a legit business that you have to run and take serious, family. So do not overwhelm yourself by trying to get dog after dog after dog after dog and get them pregnant. Just so you can make a bag. Put time and effort and deep thought into what two dogs you decide to put together. Don't put too much together to make mutts and junk dogs to try to make a dollar, man. Have a vision in mind for what you want to breed, what you want the dog to look like, and uh, what you want to envision your account as being. Do not step foot into this lane if you don't have time for it. Do not step foot into this lane if you like the vacation heavy. Do not step foot into this land if you don't want to deal with cleaning shit. If you don't want to pay vet bill after vet bill and you really can't afford it, take your time. I would say this game is more of a sweet spot for a gentleman that is, um, especially if you one of them that's looking to have 10 dogs, you know what I mean? Or looking to sit at the house all day long and not go nowhere. Or is this truly what you want to do? I say this for somebody that's, this is a soul, heart, and purpose on earth to breed dogs. Or either you at the house and you're 45 years and older. You feel me? And this is just what you want to do. But for the cats that's out there that's 18 to, 18 to motherfucking 35 Bro, hold tight. Your time is coming. Don't own, don't own more than, don't own more than five dogs, bro. Because if you don't got the time for it and you like to rip and run, your dog will get neglected, family. And that's just not the life that you want to create for a living human being, bro. That's not what you want to do. So if you don't have time, make time for your dogs those of you breeders that are watching this and you realize you've been kind of neglecting your dog and you ain't been spending much time with them make time make time to get them dogs out the cage and let them run and let them breathe and do whatever they want to do um i don't share everything on camera with y'all because once again your boy be busy i don't hold other business family um i tattoo and I do a bunch of different things. I tattoo, I do music. So the times I'm not tattooing the music fam family, um, it goes to my dogs. I'm definitely about to start pushing some more dog content out for the family. I know y'all like these informational videos, um, these videos that can help y'all grow, man. Um, and once again, man, if you're here for music, if you're here for dogs, if you're here for the tattoo content, Thank you. Thank you so much, family, for tuning in. It's well appreciated. Um, hopefully, I was able to share something with y'all today that will give you an insight on what you should be and um, should not be doing in this dog game, depending on the lifestyle that you live or want to live, family. Uh, your best bet, if you're a very busy person, is to possibly own a top stud family i would definitely say that's my goal for the future just to be sharing a little insight with y'all my goal for the future would be to create a top stud and um to eventually in the future just travel across the world with that dog 
and put all of my time into that one dog. Um, of course, I have Gamora. I don't. I don't think I plan on breeding Gamora, y'all. She's just gonna be more of a a pet. So Gamora is easy. She in-house pet. Um, and when Piper's career over, she'll probably be an in-house pet. Riley, she likes to run the backyard. So that's really simple. Um, it's really comfortable. And it's easy for me, family. Make sure that you don't put too much stress on yourself with this dog game. Take your time. Be patient if it's something that you want to do. Don't overwhelm yourself. I love you all, family. And as always, sending you guys love, peace, joy, and kindness. From this side of the screen, I'm sorry, <laughs> messed it up. From this side of the camera to your side of the screen. God bless y'all, and I will see you in the very next video, family. Peace.